So I'm Dr. Cameron Stelzer. A lot of kids call me the Story Doctor, and I am an author and an illustrator, and also do workshops around Australia each year. And I love using watercolours. I love using um, pencils, pens. Each of my series use different mediums too. I like to to create some variety in what I'm doing. And um, yeah, the, the stories are designed for different age groups. So I've really tried to capture, um, you know, from the first years of primary school, the, the, the prep years, all the way up to, um, you know, year six now with, with a different series too. And every year I'm finding that there's little gaps there where I need to create something for a different age group. And um, it's, it's a lot of fun, a very fun, creative process. Being a doctor, it's an easy um, thing to explain to kids, not being a medical doctor, but having a doctorate of visual arts and specialising in stories. That's what I do, I live and breathe stories. So we thought that would be a nice way to, I guess, acknowledge that rather than every time you go somewhere, oh, Dr Cameron, what are you a doctor of? And can you fix my arm? It's like, no, but I can help your story. I can help your, your illustrations and things like that as well. So uh, it's just something nice and simple and, and quirky. And um, I, I guess it's good for kids to see too that you can go forward and, and study and become um, you know, uh, an expert in, in, in a lot of different fields. It doesn't just have to be medicine or science or things like that. There are creative fields too where um, the knowledge that we can learn and, and share with other people is really important. Yeah, the chicken and the egg question. Yes, so um, if we go right back to primary school years, I love writing. I don't think I had much of a, a talent as an illustrator or as a drawer back then. So I like writing short stories. Went to high school, got a pair of glasses, which really helped with the vision, and I started doing a lot more illustration and just art in general. And then after art college, I decided to start putting those two things together. So I guess writing was there, but then I guess drawing was the thing that I really was inspired by in my developmental years and also my um, study years at university. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's great to do both. Kids always say, do you prefer writing or do you prefer illustrating? I don't have a, an answer to that, Depend, depending on what I'm doing at the time. You get frustrated with both in probably equal measures too. Um, it's hard to kind of nail that perfect sentence and the perf perfect flow for a story. But at the same time with a picture, um, there's still limitations to what you can do as well with your skills and with perspective and um, you know, w the format of a book too can, can dictate what you can achieve. So uh, there are times where I'm tearing my hair out and going, I don't want to draw any more pictures, I just want to write and other times ago, I just want to sit down with a pencil and some paints and, and just explore. But it's nice having both outlets to work on. The Strudel was created when I worked in a museum in London, that was just over 15 years ago. Apple Strudel was the inspiration of the Strudel's name. So and then I changed a few letters around, so that's where it came from. But it's easy, you go to Google, type in Strugal, and easy to remember now. I worked on six Strugal books, um, finished the first one back here, and then the next ones, they came out until 2012, and then since then I've been working on the Pirate series um, for the next five years, and then the, the new Scallywag series now, and that started last year, so it's only been around for, I think the first books came out June last year, so about six months, so. That's the fresh series for me now. So there's at least eight planned. So I've got um, two finished. There's two more coming out this year. They're completed as well. And I'm working on the fifth book at the moment. I've finished writing that and working on the illustrations. So. Um, I guess it's the illustration style. I use the pencils for those and I'm using a lot of shading and, and rendering as opposed to the quick pen um, sketches which you see with maybe a bit of watercolour with a lot of the other illustrators. So mm -hmm. I think that at least it kind of goes with the feel of the, the, the books as well. The Scallywags are a pirate school and you know back in pirating days we didn't have computer animation and, and quick um, sharpie pens to draw pictures and things like that. So I've tried to use materials that will kind of suit the, the feel of the books. Um, and yeah, kids have been really excited about the, the texture and the, um, I guess, the rendering of, of the characters too. So it sort of brings them to life in a different way to some of the other books out there. Oh yeah, absolutely. The nice thing about the Scallywags as opposed to the other books that I've worked on is it's set at a school. And being an author who visits schools uh, most of the year, um, every day you're getting new ideas. You're asking kids what they like to see, what they find interesting at school. You might go somewhere and they've got a talent quest. So my latest book, The Hungry Hairy Sea Monster, which is coming out in a few months, um, has a school talent quest. So I was looking at the acts that the kids are involved in, um, the kind of things they find interesting. I'm working on one at the moment, which is kind of referencing wrestling and sort of trends and fads that go through school um, in terms of, I know video games are a big thing at the moment. Certain video games are quite popular. Yeah. And, um, and so it's sort of touching on that and sort of having a bit of a, 
a, a bit of commentary in the background for parents at least too. Um, but lots of fun action and excitement going on and that's been generated from what the kids would like to see in the books. The State Library who do organise the, the Summer Reading Club um, yeah, approached us and asked if I'd like to be a guest blogger and that involves putting a blog each week out for kids and also chatting with them online, giving them responses to questions and a bit more depth and feedback uh, about what I'm creating and what they'd like to know about with their own writing and, and um, reading as well. Um, yeah, so each Sunday morning a blog pops up um, for the kids to, to check out and parents as well and then lots of um, responses and we have competitions as well. I think one I've run already is about um, children re responding to um, one of my characters who's a, a silly sidekick so they had to come up with their own character and thinking about a name um, and maybe a silly little saying that the character has that can become a bit of a, a catchphrase that they can use in their own stories. So there's been some great responses to that so far. The Curious Creature workshops that I'll be doing will be an, a combination of a little bit of a presentation style format. So I'll be showing kids a bit of behind the scenes of what I'm doing, but mainly it's a hands-on workshop for them to, to get involved in creating some own, their own creatures. I might show them how to create some of mine. Um, I've got some props to bring in too, so they'll be creating some of their own with a bit of the pirate theme, with a bit of a hybrid creature theme. I'll keep it pretty flexible. I think every session depends on you know, the, the age of the kids and who's there. Um, you know, we've got hours and hours of content we can cover, but within our session, we'll try to pick the things the kids are most benefit from in the particular session. It's going to be lots of fun. Um, if you like creating, you like drawing, illustrating, um, finding out more about interesting creatures, um, come along. And it's really nice, even if kids aren't quite sure, I can't draw, my, my advice for you is to just to have a go. I can show you some very simple steps and pretty much anybody, as long as you have a pencil in your hand and you've partly sharpen that pencil, which is a good start, um, we'll be able to create some really cool things together. It's really nice to see the inspiration that you can have on other people's lives. I think that's the main thing for me. I don't go there looking for ideas, and looking for something I can use in my stories. It's more about trying to give something back. And it's a creative um, process too. A lot of children come up to me and say, we really love you to create a story with this particular character and that particular character. So when I get those requests, I try to make those, those happen at times. Um, but it's really nice for kids to be able to see um, an author and, and understand the whole process of creating stories as well, trying to demystify the, the whole experience rather than just an author, someone who sits in a room or an illustrator and creates and then the book comes out on a bookshelf, it gives them a chance to, to see how the process works. And my process is very similar to what kids do. Um, don't use a huge amount of computer um, art, I like to keep things pretty natural and pretty free flowing. So. As I said, with a pencil, maybe some paints and things like that as well, kids can create anything. 15 years of creating stories now, I think even more than probably earlier on, I think it's, it's beneficial for me as well as my audience knowing what kids like to see, what they find interesting. Um, you know, we think we know it all as we get old and we think oh, we've got it all covered, but kids are very different than they were when I was growing up and there's different interests, but also there's some things they find, um, you know, that we have in common, like the humour that the kids have and um, the type of jokes they find funny. It's good to road test that too with kids. You can put up something you think's hilarious and nobody laughs, you know, hey, that's not going to be in a story, we'll have to change that.